What are we doing today? Today, my friends, all my little friends, we are setting some tile. And it's the end of the day. Yeah. It has been a good day. It has been quite a good day. And now it is the end of this regular working part of the day. About time to go home, get ready for the coming Shabbat. And I'm excited. I'm excited to get to go home, be with my wife, kids. Oh, let's see, let's move this guy in here like it's supposed to be. Let's pull that stuff out of there. See, that's something I almost forgot, which is why I decided to make this video. I uh, was looking at this here and I said, all right, just got a few tiles left and we'll be ready to get the fuck out of here. Oh, pardon me, language. <laughs> language alert. We'll be able to get out of here and go home and get on to everything else. And then, I remember, don't forget to be here in this moment. Don't take this, don't take this, uh, this work that's being done, that your hands are doing, and cheapen it by not paying it attention. So, ah, uh, there we go, that's pretty. So, hence the video that we're watching right now, or that you're watching right now, that I'm making right now. Oh, it's so easy to get into a mindset of, well, I'm almost freaking out of here. Well, we just rush it up, rush it up, rush it up, and you screw everything up. And it's always when you're just seconds away from a perfect getaway, too. Let's see, that one fits in there right like that, but we gotta put some more mortar down first. Hmm. Cannot forget where these cut pieces go. The full tiles, well, they're all the same, mostly. Ah. And... I'm gonna scrape a little bit more mortar out. Get the mortar on the trowel and just flop it right down there on the on the floor like that. We're gonna in a few minutes here we will make a topographical map of the world of this bathroom floor. Here, I'll show you how. You see this end of the trowel, this end right here, it's got these notches, this end is flat. This end's good for scraping out of the bucket. This end is, uh, scrape it like that. It makes all these little ridges. Kind of like a, kind of like a map. Ooh, even more like a, like a zen garden. That's the way this feels. Scraping this stuff on here. Always feels very zen. Very zen indeed. You don't know what Zen is? Well, let's see. How to describe Zen? Zen is like when everything in the universe is just working perfectly together. And you are a part of that universe. And in being a part of that universe that is working together so perfectly with everything, you are the whole of the universe. Not the H-O-L-E whole. The W-H-O-L-E, hold up, the whole, whole, how do you even say that word? Inquiring minds want to know. It's kind of like the word rural. That's a weird word. I mean, seriously, what kind of a, a sadist put together the word rural? Put two R's together like that? You're just asking for problems. Ah. Uh. The bottom of the bucket sometimes it gets a little bit crunchy, a little bit to where it wasn't mixed up quite all the way. Yeah, maybe crunchy is the wrong word. Dusty. It gets a little bit dusty down there. Don't worry about it, just scrape it out. Put it on the floor, mix it in with all the others, it'll be just fine. Just fine, Charlie. We 
I'm gonna have to use every last little morsel of this uh, of this spin set here. Which is just fine by me. It means I don't have to mix up anymore and you don't really have to do much to clean out that bucket. So uh, good to go for me. But here's the important thing, and the whole reason I turned this this video on in the first place. As I've been sitting here gabbing to you about being in this moment, I have been in this moment. It's pretty nice. You know, when you're, when you're just purely in the present moment, there's no need to look for any, any words. There's no need to validate any thoughts, come to any conclusions, any judgments or anything. You don't have to think about anything. You just do. It's like first when we learn something, we're in a we're in a stage of just of perception. We're just uh, we're sensing everything about it, and we're logging all this data down. And we do it more and more and more, and we get to where uh, we get to where we don't have to have such conscious energy and conscious attention and focus on what we're doing anymore, and so we end up slacking off. You know, we go on autopilot, and that's it. That's all she wrote, folks. Why? Because the mind loves to be in charge of everything. The mind is, uh, you know, to be honest, the mind is kind of like, uh, uh, kind of like that spoiled kid in the neighborhood. Just got everything he ever wanted. Everything handed on a, on a silver platter. The mind is kind of like that, but it's not really, not really your fault, not my fault, not our fault. It's nobody's fault. It just kind of happens that way because we forget that we are not the mind. And as long as we think that we are the mind and we're identified with that directly, well, then we find all kinds of messed up problems. The ego takes control, all this kind of stuff. You know what that's like when the ego takes control? Have you ever noticed that? I have a feeling that a lot of people have, have maybe not noticed it. Uh, I have a feeling a lot of people have. You know, we've got this whole, uh, we've got this like era of awakening going on. All these millions or maybe billions of people even all around the world just uh, waking up to uh, a higher reality and a higher plane of, of consciousness than what they used to. And that lower plane of consciousness, that's where, that's where the identification with the mind comes in. Because, hey, we're told that, oh, you have such a great mind, such a brilliant mind, and uh, all this type of stuff. And, the, oh, the ego, he just loves to eat that stuff right up, doesn't he? Okay, we got a little bit of an issue here. Gino, Gino's the boss man. He's the one that cut this tile that I'm setting. Ah, eh, that'll do it right there. Sometimes you gotta just move one tile or another tile just a little bit. You can't really use spacers on a lot of tile because a lot of tiles, they're just not, uh, they're not a uniform size. You try to use spacers, you end up getting all, all off and it gets all messy. Just one big mess. I'm gonna scrape that out. Mm. Rinse off the fingers in the water. When you're tiling the floor, go ahead and have a bucket of water right there. That way you can clean stuff up as you're going along. It really helps out when it comes around time to grouting. And uh, also what I usually like to have near me is a bunch of little pieces of cardboard or uh, little pieces of 
just little scraps of wood even, uh, just to scrape to scrape the mortar out of uh, out of the grout joints where where it comes uh, comes up to the surface when you set the tile. You ever have it happen where you're not quite sure which voice you want to talk in? Like sometimes it just wants to be kind of a, I don't know, a generic kind of semi-tough guy from a movie. You know, maybe that's kind of based on Robert De Niro or Al Pacino or something like that. But then all of a sudden it changed. It changed to just something completely random, not based on anything in particular. This is like autonomous mix of Hebrew, Israeli, uh, and Russian. Let me come right. There's a buzzword, huh? Russian? No, Russia's not a buzzword anymore, is it? It's stupid. Iran? Iran is a bit of a buzzword. Anyone would have been watching the news on Iran? They're always a buzzword. I'm just not quite sure. Who knows what to do with those guys? They say they only want uh, nuclear technology for electricity production, but they have all the oil in the world. What do they want with nuclear? Sounds like a pile of crap to me. And maybe they'll say, oh, we're doing it, uh, we're doing it for reduced emissions. I don't know though, you can't really get me to believe that they care very much about what the emissions are. I don't know, it just doesn't, just doesn't sit right as true. Okay, we got all the tiles set here. We'll make sure that we're wiped off in places where we got the mess on the floor. And make sure one more last check that the grab joints are good. And I'm gonna squeeze this one back over toward her brother. Okay, finito. Time to clean up and leave and go do other work at home. So, yes, the power of staying in the moment. Had I not kept my focus right here, had I been instead thinking about, I don't know what I was going to do when I get home, uh, I wouldn't have been here. I wouldn't have been present. And not being present, then I would have been stuck up here in the world of the mind. The world of the mind is, it can be very enjoyable sometimes, but it's not really somewhere you want to spend a whole lot of time. You know, why? Because the mind just, it eats you up. <laughs> it eats you up. As any one of you who has spent way too much time thinking about something can affirm. Yeah, so just stay present. Anytime you find your mind wandering, just come back to present. Come back to what's directly in front of you, what you can sense directly from, uh, from this organism of your body. And uh, yeah, be present. Don't judge anything that you see. And uh, that'll be enough to be pleasant. And then you're pleasantly present. And once you're pleasantly present, oh, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. So bellissima. Bellissima. Lindo. Yeah, que lindo. Uh, is a yofi. Is a yofi a chaim. It's beautiful, this life. Mwah. Couldn't ask for anything more. Love you all. Have a beautiful, wonderful weekend. Shabbat shalom. Bye-bye.